go out and do something special and you're capable of it, but are you capable of doing it on demand? That's the difference. You guys have been shooting long enough now to know there's a lot of mental game that goes into, this, into the process here, which I want to cover with you guys at the end. Um, but for this, I'm going to work on a recoil management drill that I have where I set the timer for two and a half seconds and I start with the pistol in my hand, my finger off the trigger in the high ready position. When you guys start, you're in a low ready position, position is that correct? Yep. So you have low ready and high ready. You can choose to do it however you like to do that. Probably low ready for you guys since that's how you start anyway. Right? So for me, if I'm in the high ready position, on the, when the buzzer goes off, I simply rotate that support hand into that 45 degree angle down that we talked about on the buzzer. I rotate and drive and push straight toward the target so I can locate my sights on that target. I'm not going over the top or I'm not swooping from down below. Now, if I'm starting from the low ready position like you guys are, I'm already locked in with my full grip. I have that support hand jammed in at the, as high as possible on the, on the lower port of that pistol grip, and I'm rotating that wrist all the way forward into that 45 degree angle downward, and I'm making sure I have that torque on that pistol that I'm looking for. Finger off trigger, my eyes are specific, on a specific spot that I want to engage. Okay, so I'm not kind of looking down at the ground, I'm not looking around, I'm, I'm focused on a specific spot. Not that big giant piece of steel. I want a big, I want a small specific spot on that large piece of steel that I want to engage. And on the up command or on the buzzer, I'm going to extend out and fire a shot. Okay, so we'll see what one shot looks like in that two and a half seconds. There's, a, there's plenty of time to do that, right? But all I want to show you guys is the, the proper technique of how to rotate my hand. And at that time, as the gun's going straight out toward the target, my finger's going into the trigger guard, and I'm locating my sights on that target. Okay, if you have a safety, the safety is still on through that process as well during, during the extension. Once you guys start drawing from the holster, you're going to notice that you want to keep that safety on as long as possible. So I'm drawing from the holster here, my third point of contact touches, that's when the safety comes off once I have complete control of the pistol as I'm pushing straight down range. All right, so here we go, guys. I'm going to put eyes and ears on. I'm going to load up. All right, so this is 2.5 seconds to extend out and fire one shot. Ready. <laughs> Plenty of time there, right? So again, you see the gun just going to go straight toward the target. Try that again. So let's go three shots this time. Because again, this is a recoil management test. So three shots in 2.5 seconds. Notice how my body is not rocking back. My chest is forward. My bottom is slightly pushed out. My knees are bent. And I'm driving into the gun. All right, so we still got some time here. So we'll go from one shot to three shots. Let's see if we can go five shots now. Five shots. No problem, right? You guys aren't impressed yet, though, I can tell. Yeah. You, guys, you guys aren't impressed. All right, let's try again. Let's try again. Let's see if we can get seven shots. See if we can get seven shots in less than 2.5 seconds? Yes. All right. I like it. You guys are motivated. <laughs> seven shots, 2.5 seconds. Ready. No problem. Yes. All right. I bet you guys haven't clapped for me yet. We're going to try one more. We're going to try one more. Let's see if we can get 10 shots. Let's see if we make this happen. 10 shots in less than 2.5 seconds. For me to do this, that means that my first shot has to be roughly at about a half second. Okay, and then I have, I have to go ahead and rattle off each additional shot in less than two tenths of a second. To accomplish that, I need to make sure my stance is wide and aggressive, my butt is out, my chest is forward, and I have 30 to 40% with this hand so I can manipulate that trigger nice and rapidly and smooth to the rear. All right, so 10 shots, 2.5 seconds. Three. Yeah. yeah. 1.98 seconds. So just under two seconds. 1.98. So each shot there, we had a 51 first shot like I was looking for. And every shot thereafter was a 17, 17, 15, 17, 16, 17, 16, 16, and a 16. Yeah. So I was able to accomplish that by having the proper stance and grip. There's no special sauce or special pills. There was one kind of a shot that went up high left. But again, you're looking at the entire target, but you're looking at a specific spot in your target. So if you miss it, you still hit the target. That's a beautiful thing, right? But again, there's no special treats or pills that we can take. It's all the boring vegetables that we have to do. The stance and grip to be able to shoot at that rate of speed every 16 hundredths of a second and still hit in that softball size group is what I'm striving for and looking for. If you ever see me compete and you see a couple of shots that go outside, and maybe toward the outsides of the targets, it happens, but I'm not aiming for that, right? My goal, I'm striving for a softball size group. Even though the target is this large, I'm striving for this, just to give me the ability to be able to hit it on, on demand. Again, being cold, front of an audience, right? So any questions on that stance and grip and what you saw applied there?
Good to go. All right, so what we're going to get into next is the transitions. Transitions are also very, very important. In your game, that the, the first shot, the presentation that we just talked about, is probably 50% of your score. Maybe not quite yet, but as you get better, that's going to be about 50% of your score, and transitions is the rest of it. So there's two big pieces of that, the presentation, the transitions, and, of course, recoil management. But transitions in my world is, is one of the number one typical time savers, transitions and movements. So I want to talk about this a little bit. We kind of touched on the sector of fire out there. So when I come into this position here, I'm going to shoot these two large rectangles in front of me, okay? So to do that, I need to make sure my sector of fire is set up properly. So my sector of fire is going to be set up in a way that I have both of those targets into that position. Now, the reason for that is we talked about it, so that way once I transition the gun, my body is then squared to that next particular target. Okay, so in other words, again, if I was going to shoot this whole bank of targets here, and I went to shoot target one, and I was really bladed off to him, I get one, two, maybe three, but by the time I get to four or five, it's outside of my sector of fire, I'm not able to get there quickly and efficiently. Okay, but two things that we need to do to make a successful transition. One, visually. Two, physically. Okay, what I mean by visually is getting the eyes moving in front of the gun. I'm going to show, I'm going to kind of demo this in a second so you'll see it on the clock and we'll see the difference. By the way, if you don't have a timer, I highly recommend getting one. I don't care which brand it is and what you guys use, but make sure you get a timer because it tells you exactly, as you guys saw in my previous demo, I was able to go exactly hundreds of a second at a time and see where my times are. So it helps you in that training process. But visually is what I need to do first. So as the gun, what does that mean visually, right? As the gun lifts and recoil, the first thing I want to do is my eyes are going to rotate into their sockets. Our eyes are moving as fast as, as fast as moving part in our body. Besides my tongue, I'm from Louisiana, I talk fast, guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> Once that shot lifts, my eyes rotate into their sockets and they begin to locate the next target. Then my head follows, then my arms, then my hands, then the gun comes into my peripheral vision and I'm placing the dot on the target or I'm bringing my vision back to that front sight to make an accurate shot if I need to. Okay, but that's all being driven by the lower body. So the eyes have to lead everything. If you drive with the gun, it's very hard to stop in the center of that target or to even stop on the target in general. If any of you guys are driving right now, Try driving out of the parking lot later, looking at the front of your hood as you're exiting the parking lot. It's very hard to stay on the road, right? Most of the time when you're driving, what do you do? You look where you want to go and you just turn the wheel to get there. Same thing with the pistol. As the gun lifts and recoil, I look where I want to go and I drive the gun there. As the gun comes into my peripheral vision, I start easing the gun in, almost like I'm coming to a stop sign. I'm not going to slam on my brakes, right? I'm going to start to kind of ease the gun into that position. And that wide platform that we talked about gives me the ability to stabilize on that target that much sooner. Okay, so. With that, we're gonna get the eyes moving in front of the gun. The lower body's gonna do the work. So the physical aspect is the lower body. My stance is wide and aggressive. I have the weight on the balls of my feet. Now the weight on the insides of the balls of my feet are gonna drive the gun, drive my upper body, and drive my hips to opening up to that next particular target. But again, the eyes are, the eyes are moving first. Okay, so hips gonna open, and then the upper body will pull and assist to that general direction. Now there's gonna be times when you have your transitions more narrow, so you don't have to really move around and get the, eye and get the body moving that much. And when that happens, it's all about the visual. It's all about visual. So if you have a plate rack, anybody of you shot on a plate rack before? Six plates, right? Six plates, you just go, that's a great visual test. There's not a whole lot of physical movement, but if the gun lifts and stops on that plate and then you move it, you'll never excel at that speed, right? You have to let the gun lift and recover on the next plate. The gun's gonna recover somewhere. So when it's in recoil, why not just move your hips and let it recover over here, okay? So that's what we're trying to accomplish by having the eyes moving in front of the target, getting that visual test. Okay, so for this test here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on one target to my left and one target to my right, but I'm going to give you the, the idea of with not getting my eyes moving first, right? So I'm going to go let the gun fire, recover, and then drive with the gun. We'll see what that time looks like, and then we'll go the other way. All right, so eyes and ears. Again, first thing I want to do is make sure my sector of fire is set up. All right, here we go. So what I did there, the transition time was a .72. So what did I do incorrectly there? I let the gun stabilize and then I drove. But once I got there, I shot into the target. In other words, once, it got, once, once the, the dot got on target or the sight started to float in, I touched it off. I shot into the target and I still was able to shoot in a specific spot that I wanted to get to. Okay, why? Again, because I let the gun settle and then I drove my eyes and got over there and fired. So there's two things that can make you slow on the transition. Obviously letting the gun stabilize and then drive with the gun. That time I just allowed the gun to stabilize. Now this time I'm going to try to move the gun in recoil and see if we can't beat that .72 transition. Just moving the gun in recoil. Protector of fire set up. Transition time that time was a .31. So I cut it down in half or more. 
That's something really, really unique and something to think about right there. Why is transition one of the typical time savers on a course of fire? Because of what you just saw there. And I only made one mistake and, uh, uh, just a second ago. Had I made both mistakes on the entry, I'm sorry, on the exit and the entry, right? So not leading my eyes and then letting the gun stabilize and then driving with the gun, maybe I would have been a second or more on that transition. And then once I allowed myself to get my eyes ahead of the gun, I was a 72. And on that last one, when I allowed the gun to recover and recoil on the way to the next target, I cut that in half as well to a 31. So the difference between great shooters out there that are winning at this high national level and the other shooters out there that are striving to get there, I believe, is the transitions. And that's really why I want to talk about this with you guys today. Because it has nothing to do with shooting. That's the funny thing, right? You can shoot as fast as you want. So in other words, when I was up here and I was shooting this, this first drill, and I was rattling off around every 15 or 16 hundredths of a second, maybe that was fast, right? But if you guys came up here and did it two tenths of a second, maybe I beat you by four hundredths of a second per shot. There's ten shots there, I beat you by four tenths of a second. Sounds like a lot, sounds great, but let's talk about the transitions. If I beat you by 50 to one second on a transition, one, two, three, four, and say you've got a presentation, so we have one, two, three, four transitions. If I'm beating you by two to four seconds on one string of fire, just because of the transitions, and it has nothing to do with shooting, it's all based on technique, what's the low-hanging fruit that you want to go for? Shoot fast to look cool, or let's cut our transitions in half, right? Cut the transitions in half. Take the time needed to shoot. So two tenths of a second to sixteen hundredths of a second in, in splits. From shot to shot is split, in other words, right? So splits are measured in hundredths of a second. They mean nothing. They mean nothing. It just sounds cool, right? But transitions are measured in tenths of a second, and they add up. If you have five or six transitions on a stage, next thing you know, you're two to four seconds slow, and you don't know why, right? It's because of the simple transitions of getting eyes moving in front of the gun. So we'll kind of play this a little bit more because there's going to be times when you go from one target to a smaller target, larger target to a smaller target, smaller target to a larger target. The same techniques will apply, but you have to have the visual patience and discipline to allow the sight to stabilize a little sooner on a different type of target or maybe have a different trigger press or a different sight picture. So I have three different types of sight pictures that I utilize. My first sight picture is a flash sight picture, floating sight picture, and a focus sight picture. All that really means for if you're running an optic, because I know some of you guys run optics, is stabilization. Right, so for my first, my, my flashlight picture, the dot is going all over the place. As long as it's doing that somewhere in the center of the target, I'm okay with it. Because the distance or the difficulty of the shot dictate the ability to do that. If the target goes further away or becomes smaller, it could be the same distance, but now it's just a smaller target, I can't, I, I can't allow that crazy movement to happen. I can't get away with it. If it's going all over the target, I can't hit it. Right? Or I'll hit it periodically. It has to be going all over the center or the general area of the center of that target. So my floating sight picture, it's kind of just floating on the, on the target itself. And my focus sight picture is completely stopped or as much as my normal <coughs> arc of movement will allow me to do. Now, how, how does that relate to iron sights? Because many of you guys are shooting iron sights. It's vision, it's focus. So flash sight picture, my eyes are focused on the target. There's not enough time to bring that vision back to the front sight. It takes time to do that and it's not necessary because the target is 10 yards away and it's 18 by 24. Now, if that target is 10 to 12 inches and it starts to go further back, well, I need to see more of the sight. So my vision then starts to come closer to the front sight. So my floating sight picture for the iron sight, right, is my vision is floating in between the target and the front sight. It sounds kind of weird, but my vision is starting to come toward that target. I'm sorry, toward the front sight. All that means is I'm establishing greater control or greater vision of that front sight. The closer my eye comes to the front sight, I'm getting more clarity, so I'm able to aim and see a little bit better. And of course, a focus sight picture is my vision travels all the way from the target. Because remember, you just did a transition. You transition, so your eyes are already out there. And then your gun's coming into your peripheral vision. And then your vision comes back to the front sight for a focus sight picture. I'm 100% focused on that front sight. Even amount of light, even amount of daylight on both sides of that post, flush across the top. And then I'm getting that visual that I'm looking for on the target, that sight picture that I'm looking for. But I have my 100% vision on that sight, and the target is then blurred. But that's more of the typical sight picture that you've probably heard. Uh, but I use three different types of sight pictures so that way I can increase my speed when I'm able to do so. Last thing I'll say about the sight pictures is the trigger control. To me and to you guys and anybody out there, law enforcement, military, competitive shooters, self-defense shooters, to me trigger control, my definition for that, trigger control is nothing more than activating the trigger as quickly as possible without disturbing your sights off target. Okay, so that initial shot group that I did in less than two seconds, uh, that softball size group of ten shots, Right? That trigger control was, I was able to get away with that slapping of that trigger because I'm only at 10 yards. Now I try to do that same thing at 30 yards and I try to slap that trigger at that high rate of speed, my group's going to do this. Okay, so as it relates to how much vision I'm seeing or how much I'm demanding of the front sight or the stabilization of the dot will also dictate how quickly I can press that trigger. 
So it's all, to me, it all comes down to speed and quickness. If I can activate the trigger at a high rate of speed, I need to, and I will. If the target is further or smaller, well, of course, I have to remove the slack of that trigger. Okay, so what I call a pause, prep, press. I pause to allow the sight to stabilize. I prep to get rid of the slack of that trigger. Some of you guys are running incredibly light triggers, and there's not much slack in there. Some of you guys are running triggers that maybe have some of that play, trap, that pre-travel, that play, or that slack, whatever it is. Get rid of that stuff before you start to engage the actual trigger. Because what happens is if my trigger was engaged here to go bang, and I have my trigger to where it's out like this, so I have all this play before I get to that kind of engagement. If I slap through that, what's going to happen? Watch my fingers here. If I slap through that, you see how my fingers dip. Same thing, you slap the trigger and you're going to see your hands dip down or your fingers dip down to the ground. Okay, same thing's happening there with the, with the front sight or the, or, the, or the dock or the muzzle of the gun is getting dipped down. However, you can manipulate that trigger quick, get rid of the slack quick in the pause, prep, press, pause to allow the sight to stabilize, prep to get rid of the slack of the trigger, and then push straight back quickly and have minimal movement of that front sight or that muzzle. Does that make sense? All right, guys, so we're going to try to go here, uh, working the smaller target now, going from a large target to a smaller target. I'll go a couple of times here so we can see what it looks like and see what the time difference is. But remember, I was a 31 transition from that target to that target. From big to big, I was 31 transition. We'll see what this one is here. That was a 44. That was a 44 transition. Didn't look like I lollygagged a whole lot there, but it was still took me longer. So I was probably 20 to 25 percent longer. That target in distance. If I was to move my hand from target one to the, to the circle plate or target one to the target two, I'm actually moving the gun less in distance, but I'm what is that 50, almost 20 percent, 25 percent slower on the transition. Why would that be? Smaller. Smaller, right? So what am I demand? What's what am I doing at that time? Pause, prepping, and pressing, right, like we talked about. I'm driving the gun from one target to the next, getting my vision in front of the gun, and once the sight gets there and I have white all around my dot and it's acceptable, ready to hit, then I'm able to activate the trigger. But during that transition process, I'm, I'm releasing the, the, the slack of the pre-travel of that trigger. So I'm releasing the slack of the pre-travel of that trigger there. All right, so last to, last to just have a little bit of fun here. Let's see what kind of time we can get if we can shoot all the way across these guys and play with it a few times. I've never done it before. We just set it up today, so we'll see what it looks like and see where we can get. And afterwards, I'd like to talk to, get you guys back into these stands and talk to you a little bit about more of the mental management side of things and get some questions and answers, all right? All right, let's see what we can do. It. Here we go. Get that sector of fire opened up. Let's start left to right and see what it looks like. One point six seven, but I had a bad bullet on the first shot. I don't miss. I don't know if you guys know that. I don't miss. I just had a bad bullet. From time to time. They, they, they As we had somebody earlier say that the uh, the bullets have magnets in them. They forgot to put a magnet in that first one. So I'll make sure the next one's ready to go. That was one point six seven on that first shot. Was a point seventy. Didn't have enough visual patience and discipline to hit that first target. Right. Then my transition from target one to two was a twenty. From two to three was a twenty nine. Why is that? Smaller target, right? Going from small to big, 20. I'm fine with that. Going from big to small, I have to be reasonably slower so that way I can make sure I hit the target. Going from small to big, 27. So I was a little bit faster that time. And going from big to big, I was back to my 21 again. Okay, so really it's all about being able to have changing of the gears and seeing what you need to see when you need to see those things at a high rate of speed. All right, so let's try it right to left and see what we get, and then we'll go back and chat. Make sure I'm clear here. Here we go. Sorry, it's dirty. All right. So that was a 1.72. So 1.72 is 167 going one way and a 1.72 going the other way. Now, I highly recommend if you're going to shoot left to right, try to work on shooting right to left as well. Your time should be almost identical. And they were within five hundredths of a second these two times. And I had all good metal uh, magnetic bullets on that one. So <laughs> good to go. First shot was a 62. My transition down was a 20. My transition to the back, even though I moved the gun very little, was still a 29. Making sure I needed to see what I saw, make sure I saw what I needed to see there. Then coming over here, a little bit wider transition was a 34. 27 to the back for a total time of a 172. 172. Any questions on the drills that we talked about here? Good to go? All right, guys. Well, I appreciate your time. If any of you want to talk a little bit more about mental management side of stuff or have any questions that you'd like me to answer, let's go back over to